using concrete materials. That is very important. Whenever there's a new concept, we must use concrete material. For the lesson I was teaching yesterday, the concept was fractions. And the first concept in fraction is equal parts. So I give them the concrete materials. These are called pattern blocks. The students were asked to make a shape that looked like this, <coughs> same size, same shape, using all the others that they are given. And I told them they must use one color only. They shouldn't mix the color. Using these things that they made, I asked them, what about these two pieces? What about these six pieces? What about these three pieces? And they say different things. Among them, they will say that they are the same shape. Some of them say they are identical. Some of them say they are the same size. So I was getting to the concept of equal parts. From there, I refer to these two as being two equal parts. So I asked them, how many pieces do you use? They will tell me two. How many pieces do you use? I tell them three. How many pieces do you use? They tell me six. So using concrete material, we help the student learn the main concept. When you use the textbook, every lesson we teach has one concept. For example, in this lesson, the concept is equal parts. And how do we go about teaching it? It's using concrete material. In this case, the concrete material allow them to understand what is equal part. Because they can put one on top of the other and they overlap nicely. And you can see when students use concrete material and they work with their partners, they are very involved in the lesson. So even though yesterday there were many teachers, adults sitting in the room, the students were not distracted at all because they were using concrete materials. After using concrete material, I ask them to look at the board. I stick them on. This is not concrete. The children cannot touch it. It's so far from them. Yet it is concrete to me, but not to the children. So sometimes we use materials which are concrete, but it's not concrete to the students. So in this sense, I am using the material not as concrete material, but as a pictorial representation. That's the second step when you use the textbook material. To the children, they can see, but they cannot touch this. So this is a pictorial representation. And I ask them, are they equal parts? How do you know? And one boy say, because you take this, you put on top, it fits exactly. Another girl said, it is a reflection. And they said other things. But you see, they are not touching it. They are just looking at it. And they are talking about it. So after concrete stage, it's a pictorial stage. You do not want the children to stay in a concrete stage. That will be defeating the purpose. The reason why we use concrete material is to start. We do not want to stay there. We want to eventually move on to abstract. Here, the child is using the symbols. I ask them, one of the pieces, one of the blue pieces is one third, is written like that. So I'm using the language one third, and then I wrote in the symbols. That's symbolic. That's the third stage. And then I ask the children, if I have two pieces, what do I call it? Can one of you come to the front and write it for me? And this boy came to the front and he is writing in the symbol. The first point I'm making in this morning's session is that the program you are teaching now is based on this main concept. Concrete first, pictorial next, finally 
symbols. Uh, the model method actually begins in the preschool. In the preschool, when the children learn, let's say, addition, we ask them, there are two red pens, real, it's really pen, and one black pen, how many pens are there all together? So we use the real object to model addition. It's really a pen. Later, I may draw pictures of pen on the board, but it still looks like a pen. We require the children now to transfer their idea from the actual material, pen is a pen, cookie is a cookie, to this being a representation of the pen, the cookie, whatever you talk about. And later, we no longer draw pictures like that, but we just draw a square like this. Whether we are solving a question about two cookies and three cookies, we no longer draw the cookies, we just draw uh, squares or rectangles like that. But it's in proportion. One represents one. If I want to say two cookies, I draw two boxes. I want to say three cookies, I draw three boxes. After that, I don't do that anymore. Two cookies and three cookies. The two are not clearly shown anymore. The three are not clearly shown anymore. But it is still in proportion. If I want to draw something like two blue flowers and four red flowers, I would draw them to look like it's twice as many. So it's proportionate. Finally, I don't really care how I draw it. I have some boys and some girls, and they add up to 40 of them, and there are 16 more boys than girls. How many girls are there? The boxes I draw do not represent the actual number. They are no longer in proportion. Teachers, can you see where is the concrete version of the concept? The concrete version is in the preschool when they were touching all these things. The concrete version is in the counters they use when they were in preschool and maybe in the first few months of the first grade. Later, they are going to move to pictorial representation. First more similar to the actual thing, later not similar. First, one unit is shown by one, later it is not. Finally, when they are much older, not in elementary school, but in the seventh grade, they are going to say, let this be x and let this be x plus 16. That is moving to the abstract, which we don't do in elementary school. So actually, when you use the model method, it's no longer concrete, it's pictorial. Ask the students to make this. And I ask them, so is the red piece one third? After all, it's one out of three pieces. So that was a discussion we were having. And some say yes, some say no, and they argue about it. And I ask them, so the blue, the green piece is one out of three pieces, so is it one third? Again, some said yes, some said no. And they were figuring out. And I asked them, the green piece, how many of it will fit into the yellow piece? They don't have the concrete material, they're just looking at it. So they need to be able to visualize. And that's a question you ask. In the earlier years, when they don't have enough concrete experiences, when they move on to here, they'll find it more difficult to visualize. So in yesterday's lesson, we saw some of the children having difficulty 
to visualize.